let's talk about this new study published recently in the American Journal of Sports Medicine by Laurent Malissou and colleagues. Um, it's a randomized controlled trial that had two main objectives. The first one is to compare if uh, injury rates are different in uh, softer shoes versus harder shoes. And the second objective is to see if there's any influence of the runner's weight on injury rates. So to do that, they recruited 848 runners and they were randomly assigned to one of two shoes. All shoes looked exactly the same and they were all uh, about 20% on the minimalist index. And the only difference was the midsole density. So half of people got assigned to a softer shoe and the second group was assigned to a harder shoe. And the follow-up was over six months. Uh, runners were on average were 40 years old, running about 10 kilometers a week at inclusion. And um, they were asked to log all their trainings online and all their injuries online as well. And they were split between two different groups, so the lighter runners and the heavier runners, based on a cutoff at the, the midpoint of the cohort in terms of weight. Um, what they found, uh, overall results, they had over 220,000 kilometers, over 24,000 uh, training sessions, and uh, the injury rates were 12.6% in the softer shoe, 17.6% in the harder shoe. Uh, interestingly, there was no association between the weight of the runner and injury rates. Uh, the main factor for injury that was found based on their regression model uh, was a history of a previous uh, injury, which is also um, in line with previous research. If you had a previous injury, you may be more at risk of getting another one. Uh, but what they found is that the harder shoes uh, tend to injure uh, people a little bit more, especially the lighter runners, but not the heavier runners, which is a bit counterintuitive. Uh, people tend to think that if you're heavier, you need softer shoes, but uh, that didn't uh, come out in this study at all. Now, different points to consider uh, was that, first of all, it's a high methodological quality study. It's a double-blind randomized controlled trial. Um, overall, the, I mean, the protocol was registered. Uh, the study had been also published. The protocol uh, had been published. And um, the only limitation maybe is that there was no biomechanical data and uh, no uh, objective GPS data to, um, to show the training logs. Um, but there's obviously a big limitation in, in doing that uh, in terms of time and space in the lab, bringing 800 runners, it's not that easy, right? Um, other thing to consider is that maybe injuries were actually linked with a change in shoes. So at inclusion, people were assigned a new shoe, but maybe they were used to a softer shoe before, and now they got assigned a harder shoe. and that only that factor could be uh, the cause of their, of their new injury. However, we don't have that data in the paper. We don't know what were the usual shoes of those runners before they got into the study. And third, uh, we don't really know why light runners, uh, lighter runners were uh, more injured th th uh, with, the, um, sorry, with the, the firmer shoe or the, <laughs> the, uh, the harder shoe. And, uh, but not the heavy runners. They were not injured uh, wearing the, heavy, the harder shoe. And that's a bit counterintuitive for a lot of people. Uh, maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe it just needs more validation with a, a follow-up randomized controlled trial in which we would be assessing, um, randomizing basically lighter runners into a harder shoe versus a soft shoe, but considering their previous history uh, of footwear. I think that would be good to combine. Now, what does this study change really in, in the landscape uh, of running shoes and injuries? Well, first of all, it suggests that if you're wearing hard shoes, cushion, stiff and heavy shoes with a minimalist index of 20%, well, maybe you're more at risk of injury, right? So they did not compare other types of study of, uh, of shoes. They were all uh, more maximalist shoes, but the density of the sole was changing. Um, other than this study, there had been only one previous study looking at a similar objective by the same research group in 2014 that found no difference between uh, softer and harder midsole. Uh, the difference at the time was only 15% and this one was 30%, 35% difference in the midsole uh, density. 
Now, I think one of the key take homes um, is for sure that if you're adapted to your shoes, you're not injured, you don't want to run faster, there's no point in changing the kind of footwear that you're wearing. So just be careful and uh, make sure you don't transition uh, too fast to something new in any aspect of your running training.